Hello everyone and welcome back to Towergate. It is Towergate day number 387, Monday, April the 2nd, 2018. Thank you so much for tuning in. Well, it is Monday. Let's get started with uh, our favorite uh, thing that we do on Monday, which is to name the Dumbass of the Week. Well, it was a pretty easy choice for me this week. Uh, after reviewing the comments of many idiots from the left, I found uh, no question uh, this week who was the champ. And that is no one other than previous president, Jimmy Carter. That's right, Jimmy Carter. Now, Carter said that he didn't realize, he's doing an interview with uh, Stephen Colbert, and he says that, uh, yeah, what he didn't realize was that America wanted to elect a jerk as president. So here we have a previous president calling, um, uh, that previous president being Jimmy Carter, one of the most failed presidencies ever probably in the top five worst presidencies ever. Absolute disaster. We'll talk about that in a minute. I lived through it. Oh yes. For those of you who didn't, I'm about to remind you about how miserable it was during the four years of Jimmy Carter. Yes, he referred to uh, Trump as a jerk and said he didn't realize that Americans had wanted a jerk. No, what they actually wanted was someone who would secure the border, uh, cut their taxes, protect their second amendment rights, do away with the political correctness that's destroying the country, uh, as well as uh, building back our military, getting us out of the stupid wars that are bankrupting us off of the largesse of the deep state. People like the Bushes, the Clintons, the Pelosi's, the Feinsteins, <coughs> who all benefit from huge defense contracts, which is why we go to most wars anyway. So yeah, that's why they voted for Trump. And because we wanted to shake the place up a little bit, turn it upside down and inside out. We know it's a corrupt swap and a shithole. And we wanted Trump to fix it. And when you make an omelet, you got to break a few eggs. And quite honestly, I'm quite happy about it. I'd like to see a little more chaos. Because every time I see chaos on the other side, we seem to win something. That's why he should go uh, full retard on the issue of using the military to build the wall, using money from the defense budget <coughs> to build the wall. Yes, it'll be breaking lots of eggs. There'll be huge arguments, lawsuits, people screaming to the top of their lungs. All sorts of uh, things will come <coughs> from the left and the left-wing media. But on the other side, we get the wall because they really can't stop it. Oh, yeah. That's what we should do. So, Jimmy Carter, one of the worst presidents ever, wants to call Trump. And actually, it's even worse than that because he's saying he didn't realize Americans wanted to elect a jerk, which means he's actually doing the same thing the Rotten Reverend Clinton is doing. He's actually assaulting voters. <coughs> he's saying that we, the voters, wanted to elect a jerk. Trump is not a jerk, Trump is Trump. That is his personality. It's who he is, and we knew that when we voted for him. He says, you know, what he thinks. And he talks in the same language that we all talk in. And he's not politically correct. And if you attack him, he attacks you back twice as hard. That's what really bothers <coughs> all of these people, like Jimmy Carter. Is that they never had the balls to fight back, and Trump does. Let's go back and relive a few minutes of the Jimmy Carter presidency, which I remember oh so well. Let's talk about my least fond memory of the Jimmy Carter era. I remember gas rationing and extremely high energy prices. We had to wear coats around the house most of the time during the winter because literally the cost of energy was breaking my parents. We were getting these gigantic bills for electricity. So my dad got a wood-burning stove, and we started uh, buying firewood, cutting our own firewood, and started using a uh, wood-burning stove with a big three-speed fan on it, and that provided about 50% of the heat, which kept the downstairs pretty warm when it was burning, but we had to get up two or three times during the night and refill the fireplace, and if we didn't have it filled in the morning, by the time my dad came home in the afternoon, me or him won, and didn't get it filled up again, by dinner time, 6 o'clock, it was like 35 degrees in the house. 
I remember that quite well. I do remember the cards, the booklet that they would give you, and every time you went and got gas and got a certain amount of gas, they would stamp it with a punch, and you were limited to how many gallons of gas that you could buy per month. And uh, so sometimes you would run very, very low on your card. You wouldn't have much left for gas, and you'd have to use someone else's card. Sometimes they charge you extra money for that. It became a scam, and the whole gas rationing and the high energy cost, absolutely almost unbearable. It sucked. Believe me, it sucked. That was Jimma. Jimma gave us that policy. Let's not forget the term misery index. Misery index. Oh, yeah. We all remember the misery index. That told us that the unemployment rate was 25%. Think about that. That's deep depression. That's depression era numbers. I remember it quite well. 25%. Five percent, and a lot of that was the high energy costs. And it is fair to say that J Jim McCarter actually came into office and inherited the results of the guns and butter budgets of the Johnson and Nixon administration. It was the Johnson and Nixon administration and their guns and butter budgets, uh, their uh, the over a billion dollars a year in Vietnam. Uh, all the other money they spent for uh, big programs, expansion of government, uh, all the other problems that they created in the economy, and it all hit right about the time that Jimmy Carter took office. But he unfortunately misdiagnosed the problem and then applied the incorrect solution. Jimmy Carter. That's what he's known for. Why else did we call it the misery index? It wasn't just 25% unemployment. We had 18% interest rates. How many people do you think were out buying houses when you have 18% interest rates? That's if you have good credit. I remember 23, 24% interest rates. Then, of course, the thing that probably dogged the Jim Carter presidency and actually destroyed his presidency, by the way, would be the his weak and feckless approach to resolving the Iranian hostage crisis. Not long into his presidency, a couple years into his presidency, the uh, students in Tehran took over the U.S. Embassy in Iran. And that began the hostage crisis. And it went on for 444 days to the very last day of Carter's presidency. The hostages were released one minute after Reagan was sworn in uh, and took the oath of office on January 20th. And then they released the hostages an hour later. Now that's probably because of a deal that Bush Sr. cut with the Iranians. That's what the rumor is. But regardless, the feckless, helpless, hopeless Jimmy Carter, one of the worst presidents ever. I know, I lived through it. Lived through it. Many of you did as well. We all remember Jimmy Carter. He is our dumbass of the week. Now, I did have someone last week that said, you know, you should, uh, you do Dumbass of the Week, you should also do like uh, like the Hero of the Week or something. Well, yeah, I could do that. Uh, it's a thought. From time to time, I should probably point out someone. Um, maybe if some week when I, weeks when I don't have a great candidate for Dumbass of the Week, I'll flip it and just do, okay, he was really good this week. Maybe I'll do something like that. Um, but I will tell you I would have to name as the Hero of the Week, probably week in and week out. And he's probably the reigning champion until someone can knock him off. And that would be President Trump. Uh, first, he had to defeat uh, the deep state Republicans, which he did. Then he had to defeat the heir apparent deep state uh, queen, the rotten Reverend Clinton, with $1.2 billion. And everyone on her side, including a hell of a lot of Republicans. And then he had to put up with the deep state coup, which he's still fighting against today. Every day he gets up with Uncle Bob and his executioner posse uh, looking for his head. Every day. Taking massive assaults from the media like that I've never witnessed before. Never. Not even Reagan. Did I see this kind of vitriol, hatred, foaming at the mouth, complete insanity in the efforts to take down the president by any means necessary. Yet every day he gets up and kicks ass. Every day. Never backs down from a fight. 
holds his ground, keeps fighting, exactly what he said he would do. We knew it was going to be tough, and we're living it right now. No question, Trump is the hero of the week, every week, week in and week out. Until something changes, when someone else becomes hero of the week, I'll let you know. John Huber. Why did Sessions appoint John Huber? Why Huber? Why him? Let's give this a little bit of thought. A lot of people he could have brought in, but he bring, and he really doesn't bring him in because he's not in Washington. He's actually working from his office in Utah. I did some research on him, and there's not much out there. There's actually a YouTube short YouTube video of him uh, talking. He seems like a real mild mannered sort of individual. Looks kind of honest, actually. Uh, but there's not anything out there connecting him to the CFR. Uh, the Council on Foreign Relations, uh, any globalist groups, uh, nothing of him giving speeches or belonging to any of these organizations. He appears to be just a state, you know, top state U.S. attorney in Utah who's not really, you know, connected to uh, a lot of the, the globalist or internationalist or anything like that. He seems to be kind of, it's kind of this guy out on the fringe, but not fringe in Utah, obviously, but outside of Washington. So you don't see him with having all these connections to the deep state. And that may be something that uh, Sessions was looking for. We also know that he was actually brought in on November the 13th of 2017. November 13th, 2017 was the day the Sessions brought Huber in. So he's been in there for six months. And we didn't even know it. My, my. Once that IG report comes out, he should be ready to, to pounce, wouldn't you think? Been there for six months. With everything that we know, if you can't find something in six months, you should probably quit. We're going to learn a lot more after that IG report comes out. But let's continue. Keep in mind, he comes from Utah. What is unique about the state of Utah? Oh, yeah. Well, they have a very, very high percentage of people there who are... Mormon, Church of the Latter-day Saints of Jesus Christ. I've known some Mormons. They're very fine people. I've had a few try to recruit me. I'm unrecruitable. Um, but 62% of Utah residents are Mormons, which means there's a 62% chance that Mr. Huber is a Mormon. He does look like kind of a mild-mannered sort of honest guy. Uh, you know, you get that impression just with little you can see of him. But there's nowhere that I can find that says he's a Mormon. But he comes from a state <coughs> which is dominated by people from the Mormon faith. And we know that those people are very, very conservative. In fact, we know that in the state of Utah, they have not elected a Democrat since, or voted for a Democrat president since 1964. That would have been Lyndon Baines Johnson. That's the last time they voted for a Democrat in Utah for president. Guess which group of religious groups Trump is most popular with? Christians, Jews, Muslims, and Mormons. Of those four groups, which group do you think Trump is most popular with? Mormons is very, very popular with Mormons, and they make up 62% of Utah, where Mr. Huber comes from. What do you think those people in Utah are thinking about what they see? What do you think the people in Utah would like to see? Do you think that there would be large protests in Utah if Mr. Huber brought charges against former Clinton or Obama administration folks? Probably not. He'd probably get a parade and a hero's welcome, don't you think? It appears that there's a lot of Republicans uh, who are not happy with Huber right now, or at least was not happy with uh, just his role. But if, in fact, he does launch some indictments and show that he's serious about taking action against the deep state 
and that he can look past the fact <coughs> that he is a member of the Department of Justice, that he's having to indict people in the FBI and Department of Justice, if he can look by that and uh, not have any bias that way and actually function and uh, take action, he'll be fine. He doesn't really have to worry too much about blowback from the home folks. He gives Sessions cover. He gives Sessions cover. We do know two guys who know him pretty well. Warren Hatch and Mike Lee, both fairly solid, fairly solid. I have issues with both of them in some areas, but for the most part, they're pretty solid. They're from Utah. They know Mr. Huber, and they give him a thumbs up. They say, yeah, the guy's straight up. He's a good guy. I'm okay with him. So, people who know him, a couple guys, Hatch and Lee, uh, say he's, he's a good man. Also, when the cries come out that this is a witch hunt launched by uh, Trump, who forced Sessions to go after uh, people, at that point, that argument will not be valid because, in fact, it was Obama who appointed Huber. Obama appointed Huber. So they cannot say that if Huber drops a bunch of indictments on former Obama administration officials or the rotten reverend, that it's a uh, Trump or Sessions inside guy uh, on his own witch hunt. <coughs> which is what they're going to say anyway. But it's not going to fly. He was appointed by Obama. He also he gives Sessions plenty of cover. So that's what we know about John Huber. We'll learn more when the IG report comes out. Trump tweeted today that DACA is off the table. No more deals with the Dems on DACA. This is a good political strategic move. Because what it does, it puts the ball back in the Democrats' court and it puts them on defense. Trump has just thrown them a 94-mile-an-hour fastball underneath the chin on the inside corner. And when you see that happen in Major League Baseball, what does the batter do? He backs off the plate. Oh, yeah, that 94-mile-an-hour heater underneath your chin has a tendency to keep you honest. Yes, it do. And it's a good move. I mean, he gave him a DACA deal. He said, I'll make 1.8 million of them legal. Here's the things you've already agreed to. We'll do it. We'll make it happen. And the Dems said, no way. Won't do it. Why? Because they want it as a political issue. They don't want the problem solved. Plus, they don't want to cut the deal because the other side of that deal is building a wall, which they can't have. They need those voters coming across the border from Central America. So, that is how the DACA game is being played now. It's been pushed back. You know, they tried to actually uh, put it into the budget, $1.3 trillion budget. The Dems didn't want any part of it either. And, uh, and uh, Ryan and uh, Big Ears Ryan and Twitch McConnell would have given them about any damn deal they wanted. And they still refused. They didn't even want to talk about it. Why? Because they don't want to solve the DACA problem. They want the political issue. This, of course, is going to be turned on them in the election because many uh, of these people... Uh, who are on the fringe of uh, being deported or something like that, they knew the deal that Trump put out there to make 1.8 million of them legal if they just go through the various processes. Lots of people who would have qualified under uh, Trump's uh, DACA plan uh, saw a real opportunity there, and the Democrats pissed it away. And what plan do they have? Trump's plan was better than the plan they had. These people are paying attention. Don't think that they're not. Comey, the dishonorable James Comey, the dirty cop, was interviewed by Horowitz, the custodian, the cleanup man. We expect that this will be in the IG report. It was, it was uh, one of the things they didn't reference Comey, but we're now learning that this uh, FBI internal review that was done that decided McCabe had to be fired, uh, this office of OPR, apparently it was one of the pieces of evidence that they got from Horowitz that they used to prove that McCabe was lying. It was James Comey's testimony to IG Horowitz. We don't know when this interview happened, but if it happened within the last five and a half months or so, then it's very likely that Mr. Huber was involved. 
maybe had himself or other people from his office attending and knows all about Comey, which means Comey has been interviewed at least once by Horowitz. And that's uh, very interesting in itself when we learn what what Comey said in his interview <coughs> with Horowitz. And we'll be learning that. The Rotten Reverend, prior to leaving India, canceled two speeches that she, was, that she was supposed to give. They gave no presser. They just announced that the speeches would not be happening. Obviously didn't really give any excuse or a press conference or anything like that. Just canceled the speeches. But we know that one day before she left India, doctors were seen entering her hotel room and exiting her hotel room. So doctors coming in and out the hotel room of the Rotten Reverend Clinton as she canceled her last two speeches <coughs> in India before coming back to the States to complain some more for a $5,000 fee, or $25,000. Yeah, $25,000. Well, I'm watching some uh, interview with some uh, nut on Tucker Carlson, and he's a lawyer in the state of California. And he's having this argument with uh, Tucker Carlson over illegal immigration and what's going on in sanctuary cities and all this. And there's something that he keeps saying uh, as he's going through this interview. And it's you, you hear it coming out of the mouths of a lot of these people in California, including Governor Moonbeam and this mayor of Oakland and many other people out there in California <coughs> in the political class is they continue to argue for sanctuary cities and continue to obstruct federal law they are continuously referring to things such as that they're representing the rights of these people, that they're advising these people of the rights, that these people have a right to the rights and all this kind of stuff. No, no, they don't. They're illegal. They have no freaking rights. They're not U.S. citizens. If you're not a U.S. citizen, you do not have the rights of a U.S. citizen. They are here illegally. They have no freaking rights. You cannot argue that you're defending their rights. They have no rights. They're illegal. Morons. As I've told you. As I have said many times, I'll continue to say. You cannot argue, discuss anything with these type of people. There is something about the mental disorder known as liberalism that when you get it, it automatically flips the switch in your brain of logic into the off position. You're incapable of logical thought. Incapable. Absolutely incapable. Try to have an argument with a liberal. Doesn't work. You might as well talk to the wall. It just doesn't compute. You cannot try to reason with these people, negotiate with these people, and play around with these people in any way. The only thing you can do with these people, if I've learned throughout the course of my life, is to defeat them. Defeat them. Defeat them every day in every way you can, every chance you get. You cannot just let these people go off and they try to ignore them. It does not work. Ignoring them does not work. They will not go away. You can try to pacify them, give them something they want. They will not go away. You give them a little, they'll come back for more. You give them some more, they'll come back for some more. They'll never quit coming. The only thing that you can do in the, in the dealings with a liberal, a Marxist, a Trotskyite, any type of leftist, collectivist you want to think of, the only way to deal with them is to defeat them. Defeat them. Okay. We are going to be seeing the Inspector General report <coughs> probably very soon. We know that there are those who are cooperating and they'll probably get leniency. And we know those are there are those who are not cooperating. And those probably will be the ones who will be indicted. Probably the ones in, that are being targeted because they were the central scrutinizers of the plans of the deep state coup and of the fixing of the email investigation. Those people are known uh, at this point uh, as James Comey's small group. Those are the people being targeted. <coughs> and how do we know? Because all the small group people have either been fired or quit. They're not cooperating. They're lawyering up. But then we have the other people who are still there which means they probably turned and are cooperating. So 
here is a, just a short list of the more major players that we know, whose names we know. There's many others behind them whose names we don't know, but eventually will come up in, indict in indictments. But those who are cooperating with Prosecutor Huber and I.G. Horowitz are likely the following, of course. Uh, Peter has been stroking us and Lisa Page. Bruce Orr and George Toscus, James Baker and Bill Priestap. These people are likely cooperating with the investigation <coughs> and are likely fingering, they are likely fingering the small group, which would be Mike Corton, fired, Lofman left, Lynch, fired, or no, Lynch left because of administration change, uh, Yates, fired, Mary McCord, quit, Comey, fired, McCabe, fired, James Rybicki, quit. These guys, Corton, Lofman, Lynch, Yates, McCord, Comey, McCabe, and Rybicki are likely the targets, the first targets. They were all instrumental in, in uh, cooking the Hillary Clinton investigation, email investigation, which is the first topic that uh, the re first IG report is going to deal with. That's where it begins. These people are part of the small group. They're going to be figured into the, to the IG report and the email investigation. They'll likely be the first to be indicted. There you go. Towergate, day 387, Monday. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow with some more Towergate news. You guys have a good night. Bye.